Let's have a look at the chain rule for a function in two variables. Let's say we have a function z in x and y, a function x in t, and another function y also in t. So, for example, we could have z of x and y, which is uh, x squared plus 2y. We could have x of t as maybe uh, t squared, and y of t could be 2t. Now, if we are supposed to find dz dt, how do we do this? This is where the chain rule comes in. Rather than remember the chain rule, I will just develop it whenever I come across a question like this. So, first of all, I will write down z up here. I will use a tree diagram to visualize this. I will write all variables down here, all independent variables in z. So that's x and y. And I will draw an arrow to them. And x is in t, so I'm going to write t down here. And y is in t, so I'm also going to write t down there. So now, if I want to find dz dt, what I have to do is follow each one of these two paths that lead to t. So in this case, there's two paths, meaning whatever I get from the first branch, I have to add to whatever I get from the second branch. And uh, first of all, I need to label those errors. So the first one, I'm finding the derivative of z with respect to x. And z comes in x and y, so this must be partial derivative. So we'll write day z, day x. Then x comes just in t, so this would be derivative dx dt. z came in two variables, so I have day z, day y here. And y just comes in t, so it's dy dt. Now, putting this all together, I said I have to follow this path down here and that path down there, both leading to t. Follow means I have to multiply these derivatives. So dz dt then becomes dz dx times dx dt plus, following the other branch, dz dy dy dt. And finding all of these derivatives is then not difficult. So this is the case where z comes in x and y, x comes in t, and y comes in t, and we're looking for dz dt. Now let's change this a little bit. Let's have a look at a question like this, where z still comes in x and in y, but uh, t seems to have disappeared, and I can now see y as a function of x. Now, for example, we could have something like cos x squared here. There's no t there. Let's say we're supposed to find dz dx. Now, rather than remember a formula to do this, I will just develop it again. So we'll start up here with z. Now z comes in x and also in y. And I'm going to write these errors here. But y also comes in x, so I'm going to write this error here. And this means I now have two paths to go from z to x. Remember, I want dz dx, so I need to go from z to x this way, but also that way, and have to um, multiply uh, along the path and then add up the result. Now, from z to x, this is actually day z, day x, because z comes in x and in y. From z to y is day z, day y, and from y to x, we simply have dy, dx. Now, putting this all together, we will get that dz, dx, is the first branch, day z, day x, plus the second branch, which is day z, day y, times dy, dx. And finding all these derivatives is also straightforward. Let's have a look at another example. Now let's have a look at a function z in x and t. And let's say x also comes in t. So for instance, we could have z of x t is 3x minus t squared, and we could have x of t as 2t. Or alternatively, it doesn't even have to be like this. It could also be implicitly stated like uh, t squared plus x squared is equal to tx. Now, to find dz dt, I will once again draw the diagram. I've got z, I've got x, and I've got t. 
Now x also comes in t, so I will draw it like this. And as you can see, we now have two paths to get to t. So dz dt will be dz dt plus dz dx times, this is just dx dt, so dx dt. And that's it. Now, in the particular example I've given, if x of t is equal to 2t, this is straightforward. Because what we need to find here is the derivative of x with respect to t. But if it's given in this implicit form, and there's no easy way of solving it for x, we might have to do something different. And that something is to find the implicit derivative of both sides of this equation which will then contain dx dt. We will solve for dx dt, and that will then be put in here in this equation. Now, let's have a look at one more example. z is a function in x and y. x is a function in r and theta, and so is y. So, for instance, we could have something like z of x and y is x cubed plus y cubed, x in r and theta is r cos theta, and y in r and theta is r sine theta. Now, if we want to find day z day r and day z day theta, we draw the tree diagram once again, starting with z. z comes in x and in y, and x comes in r and in theta and y comes in r and in theta. So you can see we're listing all variables where they belong. Now to go from z to r, I have two paths. I can go down this way and I can go down that way. And that's what we have to do here. So first of all, let's start here. z has x and y as variables, so this is a partial derivative, day z, day x x has r and theta as variables, so this is also a partial derivative, day x, day r. Now let me just quickly label all the others before we apply the chain rule. Uh, from x to theta would be day x, day theta. From z to y is day z, day y. From y to r is day y, day r. And from y to theta is day y, day theta. Now, putting this together, as I said before, we want to go from z to r. That's to these two paths here, this one and that one. We multiply again. So we get day z, day x, times day x, day r. That's the first path. And the second one is from z, y, y to r. So we get plus day z, day y, day y, day r. And this is the rule we have to use. Now let's look at the other one. Let's look at day z, day theta. And of course we start with z, and we have to go down to theta. And there's two ways of getting there. So for day z, day theta is then day z, day x times day x, day theta. So day z, day x times day x, day theta. Plus this path here day z, day y, day y, day theta. So day z, day y, day y, day theta. And as you can see, I don't actually have to remember any of these formula as long as I can remember um, how to put it all together. I'm writing down all the variables where they belong, and the arrows show which variables belong together. And then I simply follow the right paths, and I multiply along the paths and add the paths to find the particular type of chain rule that I'm after.